Okay, New England, turn on the lights and find your holiday cheer, because tis the season to be jolly. And for lovers of the arts, there's a lot to be jolly about. From Tony-winning plays... ...to Oscar faves... Good morning, aviators. ...like singing nuns, we've got them. There's something for everyone. So grab your popcorn. This is Chronicles Winter Arts Preview. You must think that I'm crazy. Before the musical Six took the Great White Way by storm, it turned up right here in Boston. Now, with two Tony Awards in tow, the irreverent rock musical about the six wives of King Henry VIII returns with Broadway in Boston. Chronicle dropped into the Emerson Colonial Theater to meet one of the queens who make the show sing. I'm the one, I'm the queen, somebody give me a crown. <gasps> the queen of Hi. Lives. How are you? <laughs> Gabriella Carrillo is no stranger to Boston. The Berkeley grad returns to the Commonwealth in the role of Catherine Parr, the sixth and final wife of Henry VIII. Tell me about this Tony Award winning show. It starts out through the, through the lens of a competition between all of these six queens about who had the worst time being married to Henry VIII because Spoiler, they all had a, a pretty bad time. Um, and it's told through the context of a pop concert. So we're all sort of pop star queens. So who's your inner pop star inspiration? Well, Catherine Parr, when the show was being written, is uh, I was told was inspired by Alicia Keys. But I think, I always say that I just tap into my own Sasha Fierce. So Sasha Fierce, we're talking about Queen B, Beyonce. Yeah, it, you really do feel like you are at a stadium pop concert, especially because the crowd are, the crowds are encouraged to, to be loud and to respond. As a Mexican-American actress, did you ever think you'd be playing the Queen of England? Absolutely not. But that's what I love about this show is that it's not about um, historically representing the queens physically. To have people in the audience see women who look like them on stage playing queens, that's really powerful. Give me your best Sasha Fierce. History's about to get overthrown. <laughs> If you can't get to six, no worries. We caught up with Boston Globe theater critic Terry Byrne to hear about other productions she's seeing this winter. First up, a show that needs no introduction. We genuflect when we say Hamilton or Lin-Manuel Miranda. But to make history come alive in, and show these people with all their flaws and their Egos, we are really lucky to have it come back around on tour. Cirque du Soleil is doing something called Twas the Night Before. The story is a young girl has become jaded about Christmas and her father decides to recite the poem Twas the Night Before Christmas. And the acrobatic acts have been aligned with beats in the poem. So I think it should be pretty exciting. For those who prefer a little naughty with their nice, Ryan Landry returns for his 23rd season of Christmas in Drag with the Gold Dust Orphans. Ryan Landry's show is called The Little Christmas Tree Shop of Horrors, and what he does is mash up two or three stories, but he puts them together with so much delight. It's always a great deal of fun. Finally, what are the holidays without food? This year, the Front Porch Arts Collective is offering theatrical food for the soul with chicken and biscuits. We sat down with co-founder Maurice Parent and the show's director, Lindsay Allen Cox. The Front Porch Arts Collective is a new black theater company. The mission is to advance racial equity in Boston through theater. One thing we like to say is that uh, everyone's welcome to the cookout, but we are making the potato salad. Or in this case, the chicken and biscuits. Chicken and biscuits is a fast moving family comedy with a little bit of drama spliced in there. But at the end of the day, it's just a story about a black family and black life. We want to give something at the holiday season that people can walk away feeling grateful for their families and their communities and feeling, you know, a little, a little smile on their face. What I think is so special about this piece that we have folks from this area who, who are ready to bring this work to Boston audiences, and I'm excited about that.